In this video, we're doing another applied optimization problem. And in this particular problem, we've been told that the pages of an author's new book must have the following dimensions. So the dimensions in this diagram here. And then we've been asked, what dimensions minimize the area of the page? So first of all, let's look at this diagram here. What this is telling us is that this white outline here represents the entire page. We know that the area of the printed text, so where they're going to print the text on each page, the area of that printed text has to be 80 inches squared. And we know that the margins between the edge of the page and the area of the printed text are going to be these, one inch at the top, one inch on both the left and the right, and one and a half inches on the bottom. So with that information, we have to find what dimensions minimize the area of the page. So as with any applied optimization problem, the first thing we need to do is look for the word in our problem, maximize or minimize, or maximum or minimum, because we need to know what we're trying to maximize or minimize. So if we look in this problem, what we see is minimize here. So we're going to minimize the area of the page. So in other words, we're trying to minimize area of this larger page here. So if we're trying to minimize that area of the entire page, then that means that our optimization equation is going to need to be an equation for the area of the larger page. So whatever you're trying to maximize or minimize, you need to write an equation for that. That'll be your optimization equation. So how would we represent the area of this larger page? Well, we're just looking at a rectangle, and we know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. So if we wanted to say here that this was the width of the page and this was the length of the page here, then we could say area is equal to length times width. So this will be our optimization equation. Remember that our next step is always to get the optimization equation in terms of just one variable. And right now, it's in terms of two variables. We have length and width, so we're going to need to eliminate one of them. In order to eliminate one of these variables, we're going to use the constraint equation. So we need to write another equation that's in terms of length and width so that we can eliminate one of these variables. So how are we going to do that? Well, we know that the area of the smaller rectangle here, this printed area, is 80 inches cubed. And if we think about the width of this area here, we know that the width of this printed area is w minus 2, because w is the full width of the whole page, but we're subtracting an inch on the left, and we're subtracting an inch on the right. So we're subtracting two total inches. So the width here would just be w minus 2. And then in the same way, the height here, or the length, the length of the entire page we're calling l, but we're subtracting an inch on the top, and we're subtracting an inch and a half on the bottom. So in total, we're subtracting two and a half inches. So this length then we could call l minus 2.5. So then if we wanted to write an equation for area of this printed area, we could say area is 80 square inches, so we would say 80 is equal to the length times the width, which we know is w minus 2 times l minus 2.5. Now if we multiply that out, we would get 80 is equal to w times l, so wL, and then w times negative 2.5, so minus 2.5w, negative 2 times l, so minus 2l, and then negative 2 times a negative 2.5 is going to give us a positive 5. Now if we subtract 5 from both sides, we'll get 75 is going to be equal to wl minus 2.5w minus 2l. If we add 2l to both sides, we get 75 plus 2l is equal to wl minus 2.5w. And then if we factor w out of the right hand side, we get 75 plus 2l is equal to w multiplied by l minus 2.5 then we can divide both sides by L minus 2.5 to solve for W. So what we end up with is W is equal to 75 plus 2L divided by L minus 2.5. Now we have a value for W that we can plug in to our area equals length times width equation. So when we do that, here's what we get. We get instead of L times W, we're going to say area is equal to L times this value we found for W here. So 75 plus 2L divided by L minus 2.5. Then if we distribute that L, we get areas equal to 75L plus 2L squared divided by L minus 2.5.
So now that we have our optimization equation in terms of just one variable, in terms of L only, we need to take the derivative of this equation and solve for critical points. So in order to take the derivative of the right-hand side, we're going to need to use quotient rule. So we can say A prime is going to be equal to, remember quotient rule tells us that we first take the derivative of the numerator. So the derivative of the numerator will take term by term, and we'll say the derivative of 75L is 75. The derivative of 2L squared is 4L, so plus 4L. Then according to quotient rule, we multiply that by the denominator without doing anything to it, so L minus 2.5. But then we subtract from that the opposite situation. This time we leave the numerator alone, so 75L plus 2L squared, but we multiply by the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of L is 1, the derivative of negative 2.5 is 0, so we just end up with 1 here. Then we're going to divide that whole thing by the denominator squared, and again this is all just quotient rule. So we'll square the denominator, and this is the derivative, so now we just need to simplify it. So we'll say a prime is going to be equal to, if we multiply this out, 75 times l gives us 75l, 75, 75 times a negative 2.5 gives us a negative 187.5, 4l times l gives us plus 4l squared, and then 4l times a negative 2.5 would give us a negative 10l. Then here, this 1 multiplying by 1 isn't going to do anything, so we just need to distribute this negative sign. So we get minus 75L and then minus 2L squared. And then we just need to divide this whole thing by that denominator, so we still have L minus 2.5 quantity squared. Now if we combine like terms, we'll say A prime is going to be equal to 4L squared minus 2L squared it gives us a 2L squared, and then I'll take care of these two values. Then we're going to have 75L minus 75L. Those will cancel with each other completely, leaving us with just the negative 10L, so minus 10L. And then we have minus 187.5, and that will take care of the rest of the values in the numerator. So then we just have L minus 2.5 quantity squared in the denominator. Now remember our goal here for finding the derivative, we're trying to find critical points, and the way that we find critical points is by setting the derivative equal to zero and then solving for values of L. The only way that a fraction is going to be equal to zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. So what we want to do is set the numerator equal to zero, so we say zero is 2L squared minus 10L minus 187.5, and we want to solve for values of L. Now if we multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the decimal, we get 0 is 4L squared minus 20L minus 375. And then we can actually factor this as 0 equals 2L plus 15 times 2L minus 25. Then we can use 0 theorem and set each factor equal to 0 individually, so we can say 2L plus 15 equals 0. If we subtracted 15 from both sides, we would get 2L is equal to negative 15, or L is equal to negative 15 halves, or we can set 2L minus 25 equals 0. If we add 25 to both sides, we get 2L is equal to 25, or L equal to 25 over 2. Now because we're dealing with dimensions in real space here, we can't have a negative length. The length or the height of this page can't be a negative number or the page wouldn't exist. So this value is impossible. The only value then we could be interested in is length is equal to 25 over 2. Now that being said, we need to confirm that a length of L equals 25 over 2, or we can also write this as 12.5, that that length is a length that minimizes the area of the page. So in order to confirm that it minimizes the area of the page, we need to use the first derivative test. And remember, we need to use test values on either side of this value for L, plug them into the derivative, and then analyze our results. So because this value is 12 and a half, let's use values for L of 12 and 13 because 12 is to the left of 12.5, 13 is to the right of 12.5. So if we start with 11 and we plug 11 into the derivative for L, we'll say a prime 
of 11 is going to be equal to, here in the numerator we'll say 11 squared is 121. 121 times 2 is 242, so 242. Then we have 11 times 10, which is 110, so we get minus 110. Then we have minus 187.5. In the denominator, we'll have L minus 2.5 or 11 minus 2.5 which is going to give us 8.5 or 8.5 squared so 8.5 squared now what's important here is not the exact value but whether or not we end up with a positive or a negative value if we take 242 minus 110 we get 132 if we subtract then 187.5 we're going to end up with a negative value in the numerator 8.5 squared is obviously a positive value in the denominator. A negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative value. We'll come back to that in a second, but now let's use a test value that's to the right of 12.5. So we'll say a prime of 13 is going to be 13 squared is 169 times 2 is 338, so 338. 13 times 10 is 130, so minus 130, and then minus 187.5. In the denominator, we're going to have 13 minus 2.5, which is going to be 10.5, so we'll get 10.5 squared. And so then if we simplify here, 338 minus 130 would be 208. 208 minus 187.5 would still give us a positive value. And of course, 10.5 squared is going to give us a positive value in the denominator. So a positive divided by a positive is going to be a positive. So if we drew a number line here, then what this would tell us is that we have the value we're interested in in the middle of the number line, that's L equals 12.5. So we have L equals 12.5. We tested a value on the left of 11. We tested a value on the right of 13. We plugged those into the derivative A prime. The test value of 11 produced a negative answer. What that tells us is that the function is decreasing to the left of 12.5. Because we got a positive value when we plugged in the test value of 13, that tells us the function is increasing to the right of L equals 12.5. So we have decreasing because this was negative and increasing because this was positive. So because we do have decreasing values to the left of 12.5 and increasing values to the right of 12.5, that means that we can just confirm visually here that L equals 12.5 is a value that minimizes the function. But remember, our last step with an applied optimization problem is always to go back to the problem and make sure that we're answering the question that we've actually been asked. So in this case, we've been asked to find the dimensions, what dimensions minimize the area of the page. So the dimensions of the page are length times width, or L times W. So we have to give dimensions L and W. We confirmed that the value 12.5 for L does minimize the area of the page. So we know that's the value we want to use but we still need to find W. Remember though, we have this equation already for W that we solved. We said W was equal to this value in terms of L. So if we need to find W, we're just going to say W is equal to 75, and then we have plus 2L. So we'll plug in 12.5 for L, and we'll get 2 times 12.5, which is 25. So we get plus 25. And then in the denominator here, we have L minus 2.5. So we'll say 12.5 minus 2.5, which gives us 10. So then we can say W is equal to 75 plus 25 is 100 divided by 10, or W is equal to 10. So then we want to give the dimensions that minimize the area of the page. So we can go ahead and say the dimensions that minimize the area are going to be, we'll say, length times width is equal to, to make sure we specify, 12.5 by 10. And because the whole problem was given in inches, let's go ahead and say 12.5 inches by 10 inches. And that's how you find the dimensions that minimize the area of a page.